think that, that, that I think it's probably been mostly cleared up, but it's looked as if you were always correlating the thing on the left side. I was. Or the one with number one, whatever. I was. It correlates as if maybe you can't correlate the one oh. on the right hand side. It would be better to kind of randomly jump around and say, well, let's say we push it. No, one. well, if I randomly jump around, I see. Yes, okay. And, and then we've got two ball correlated this time, and some other time randomly choose number three. No, push. just a moment. No, just a moment. Let me just say something and see whether there's a misunderstanding in reality or just in words, okay? Uh, what's possible is to make copies by a certain process, which I can call, for instance, one of the processes of making copies would be the hell with it. Don't pay much attention to what's in the other. And all correlations are lost. What's in one box has nothing to do with the other. That's a lousy way of making copies. The, one of the best ways of making copies with the most amount of correlation is there is a special way, I mean a special kind of interaction that you have to make to make these copies. It's a process, the printing process, whatever, which makes the co copies a special way so that the, what happens with the left button is correlated perfectly, that I can push any one of these boxes and it'll agree, but only for the left button. However, there's another process by which I can make another thousand sets of boxes, but I have to have the interactions different. I have to know what I'm doing ahead of time. So I make the copies. The process of making the copies is different. And for that one, it's the central button, which is correlated for all the boxes. And the third way of making the copy, the correlations, could make the third one agree. And there are other ways of making it things so the correlations aren't perfect and so on. But the more perfect ones are the more interesting ones. Is that what you want? Could I can do one or the other or another, but and I can make. We can discuss other possibilities, but I wanted to clear up That's this. Right. Is that clear up this difficulty? Could or you say instead of left button, any specific button? Yes, I could choose any specific button, but I can't choose the button after I've made the correlations. Huh? The process for correlating it depends on what button I'm aiming to correlate. Okay, I got to know that ahead of time. There's a left correlating measurement scheme. In other words, you can't take. A population where number one correlates and mix it with a population where number two correlates and then do an experiment to find out which is which. Well, I don't know. I have to think about that. If I mixed them up and then I tried to check whether, which were pairs, I might be able to figure out which is which. I don't know. Yes? Do you mean that you don't mean like in our problem it's not the initial button, but a specific location? You yes, left, choose. right, and center. We've been using that one. So we can only choose one of those locations, but it's not the initial press. That no, happens. no. Because in our example before, it was the initial press, no matter which position it was. That's in. correct. That's right. Yes, 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 yes. I see now what now was... Now good, good. Now we get the problem. Yes, yes. Last time it was the initial press that was correlated. But if this is correlated on the left, you remember, however, that although it was the initial press that was correlated, it's still true that if you don't push any other button, they're still correlated. You can measure either one again and again and again. They always agree, right? It's just that the pressing some other button screws it. All right, now, with this setup, you can push this button on any one, and it'll tell you what it'll get for any other one. And you can push it again and again, and if you want, OK? If you pushed another button over here and found out what that was, you could still find out what this used to be by pushing one of these boxes that hasn't been touched before. Or oh, it has. Depends on how it's been touched. So if those boxes are all loaded at one particular position, there is a constant, so to speak. That's right. In one position left, there's a complete and perfect constant agreement. Uh, but not if you change, not if you. Well. Can you change the correlation in a given box setup to say from number one to number three? No, you've set it up. You set up initially with one. Yeah. And now my manipulating button. No, yes and Can no. I'll tell you how you have to do it. Okay, he wants to do something. We'll come to a lot of things. We'll have fun discussing this. We'll take a time out. It's, it's nothing. We've already understood everything, but this is just to tell you attempts to beat the game by making copies doesn't work. And this is what you can, but you can do something with copies. Okay, his idea was, we've got the left ones copied. Can I do something to this box so it gets correlated to the right end? Not by touching just this box. I can by taking a whole bunch of boxes into my room 
and doing something with them, turn the whole system into the other kind. But I can't do it if I only got a few of the boxes. I have to know, I have to have all the boxes. You say, yeah, but I'm only interested. Can't you just make these few correlated? No, because I haven't got the other boxes. Yeah, I can't the turn these, I have to have the entire population to turn any of them so they're correlated any other way, okay? I can only disconnect the correlations by touching a few. I touch a few, I can screw them up, of course. In fact, an easy way to screw up the correlation of this is to measure that. We know it changes the odds on that one. But uh, if you say, oh, hell, so I screwed this box up, so I'll throw it away. I still know what number one is going. I'll just use another box to measure it. Could you at some point say how you actually prepared this? I probably will. It gets a little technical, and I don't know. I haven't prepared that. I'll have to think of a way of describing it in a simple way, a precise example of such measurements. Right. Yes. In, in the EPR, well, you might have to um, wait longer than I think. <laughs> yeah. Experiment when you talk in terms just two of them. Okay, well, we talk in terms of if you measure if, if they're identical, in op even in opposite directions using mirror image right, to make right, it the right. same and so forth. What was that assumption based on though, that they, that you could in fact produce identical so that you could measure one aspect of? It one was based one on the other. equations that of the quantum mechanics that had been developed uh, at that time. The Schrodinger equations would tell you what would be the result of various kinds of experiments. And they're still the same equations today. And okay. so they would use those equations, and he explained how those equations would produce this but effect. Could you, could you in nature produce yes. two particles? Yes. That one where you could measure <coughs> yes. momentum and, and one? Yes. How do you know? OK, all right. I have to think about how one knows that they're in fact identical other than saying they are identical. Well, we don't know whether the particles don't have to be identical. All there is need is that one measurement predicts the other one. Sorry, complication. Well, I'm identical in the sense that... The, 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 you know, what I mean by identical, what he's worried about... Identical. Yes, that, that's okay. Well, that's because the mathematics predicts it, and then you check it and it works. Uh, what he meant by the identical, this box doesn't have to look exactly the same as that box. I can make the same thing with a blue box here and a green, bad using those colors, a blue box here and a purple box there, or a square box here and a round box, triangular box there. Uh, the particles don't have to be the same. The, the objects that I use to load them don't have to be identical, but they have to have th three you know, states so that I can make this measurement and uh, load charge the boxes, but I could be charged with this correlations that we've been talking about previously or now. So the, uh, the identity of the boxes is not an essential feature at all, okay? The identity of the results is what counts in this discussion. So uh, because of this, it means that we can do what we call measuring what this button would give which consists of making this kind of special left-hand copying system and sending you one of these boxes, or two or four. You want to know the answer to? I'll send you another group of boxes, three or four boxes, if you want. And if you want to know the answer, I'll send you another three or four, because I made thousands of them. These are microcircuits. Hmm? Could they be used underwater? Yes, anyone can be carried underwater and done anything you want it with it, and uh, it'll work. Of course, you've got to be careful. There's no leak or the water gets inside. <laughs> I mean, it's possible to screw it up, but if you protect it, it's okay. But it doesn't you're, be any distance. Are you in the business of manufacturing these boxes? <laughs> in general, we are. That's called measuring. Because what we do when we measure is we say we have an atom, and we do something with it, and then we were able to publish what the result was for its spin or for something else. In this case, what would happen if we push button one? Can I order 10 boxes? <laughs> yes, <laughs> not this particular. Can you all press your box? Certainly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, they can, dolphins can press the box. Computers can be designed with random number generators to decide which one, which one of these buttons is pushed. and. Uh, record all the results and so forth, and so it doesn't require mankind to do it. You say, but sooner or later, the man has to look at the notebook. True, because otherwise we aren't going to know. You can't be us who know unless we look, right? <laughs> so you, therefore, man is essential to all observation. Yes, for all observation that he wants to know about. <laughs> A perfectly understandable philosophical principle <laughs> with no depth, <laughs> but great profundity. <laughs> 
see you and a dolphin facing up to one another. <laughs> well, that would be fun, yes. We could arrange it. <laughs> have connections. Right. Yes. In this last example, yes. you're telling us now that one of the positions is, is perfectly correlated. Right. And the rest of the story is that then in the other positions you'll get a three-quarter, one-quarter. Yes. Kind of yeah, they're not correlated. I push one here. I might get green. Another one, however, will not necessarily agree. It might be red. If I made lots of boxes and just measured all of these second central, uh, the central buttons, I would get greens and reds, either one quarter, three quarters, or three quarters, one quarter, or something else. It may be a sloppy connections, but let's say three quarters, one quarter, or one quarter, three quarters. And from which way it is, I can determine what I would have got from one. In other words, if it's three quarters green and one quarter red, I can conclude that that means that this was probably correlated, that that one's red. See, knowing that these are correlated, suppose we know how we made them, so we know they're correlated. Then we know that all these buttons are going to agree one way or the other, huh? either reds or greens. And I can determine which one it's going to be by checking the uh, second button only and finding out whether it's a predominantly green or predominantly red, three to one. If it ain't three to one, I'm screwed. Something went wrong with the experiment. It'll always be three to one, one way or the other. And when you measure with enough of them until you're convinced it's about three to one, more for the green and for the red. You know why I say you have to measure a large number, a reasonable number, because accidents can happen. Then, after you've determined it's three quarters green, you can predict what will happen if you push red, not on the same box that you've used, because you know, when you measure that one, you screw up that one, so it isn't going to help any. This one's then three quarters the other way. However, a box that you haven't touched yet, you haven't used in yet, in order to get the statistics on the second on the central button. If you push the left button on that box, it'll be red. Not on the box that you played with already, because in those boxes that you played with already, they're the universal rule. So they're all independent then, you see. That if this is green, the chance of that one being red is again three quarters. Yes. And if this is red, then the chance of that being red is only one quarter. I thought they were all perfectly correlated. They are. They are. The only information it gives us is that we know what we would get for any box by looking at any other box Just for left pushing. It allows us to separate them without, without. Yes, so that you can publish what you observed. You say about the first, <laughs> the first box, the early box. You sink your assumption back. Yes, yes. Well, what happens if you have three? That's right. Yeah. And, and what happens in nature? On a large scale, if there's anything, it's always this kind of correlations, that at least that are interesting, unless it's just chaotic. So all of the physical world, which we analyzed before, where we found laws and so forth at a large scale, were always in situations where we had millions of these things correlated. And therefore, the reality looked like it meant something to say that that was red or that was green or that, because we could check it all the time by looking at any other place. So it looked real. And it only makes real because we have so many copies. But what we've discovered is that we can't make copies of more than one thing at a time, which is another way of saying making copies is a measurement, we could say, in a way. So we can't make copies of two that are correlated on two different lines is a statement. We can't make measurement of the two different quantities simultaneously. That's the uncertainty principle. OK? I just want to compare making a measurement with these copies. You say, what has that got to do with it? What's the matter with pushing this button and looking at the light? Pushing the button and looking at the light really was making copies. Because a light, a real physical large bulb, puts photons out in all directions. You looking at the bulb can see it's red. And I'm standing over here. I can also see it's red. He can see it's red. He can see it's red. Everybody can see it's red. That's an example of the correlation. It doesn't make any difference which box you look at, which photons, over there or over there or over there. They're always the same. That's this kind of correlation. So. What we used to talk about crudely as pushing a button and reading and looking at a bulb was really a mechanism for making this type of correlated copy. OK? That's the same thing. And the laws of interaction of, of, of matter permit us to make such copy, uh, but of, do not permit us to make copies by which we can determine what the make a correlation that works both for the first button and the second button perfectly. We can make it perfect for the first button, but only three quarters perfect for the second button. Now, mind you, there's a, there is a correlation in the second button. It just isn't perfect. 
The first button is all agree, but the second button, they don't all agree, but three quarters of it is more likely to agree than not. Okay? That's what I meant. Three, it's more likely to agree with each other than not. Yeah, I said it right. Yeah, it's getting better, right? Good, we're getting somewhere. Now, if you had an observer that had a very peculiar visual system in which when it showed red, he would sometimes see green. Yes? Okay. Oh, sometimes. But then, let's say I have a... Oh, then this fellow wouldn't be uh, so hot at uh, making observations of the world. He would be drunk most of the time. <laughs> No, but then he would I mean, it's like asking for a drunk observer. He doesn't make a... No, then he would correspond to box number two. It's a different He would make number one into a number two. <laughs> but he'd make number two into something totally different. He couldn't observe number two because his three-quarter probability... Exactly. <laughs> and you wind up with that. Yeah, and whenever he observes, he's not very well correlated with... Right. It's only partly correlated. But right. There are observers like that, yes. Yes, there are. Uh, in fact, in certain... Especially when they have LSD in. Yes, but also in a certain sense, we are observers like that because we can only magn amplify certain aspects of uh, small things. This is right. an example. And so we are so, sort of seeing crudely, right? Uh, right. Uh, seeing crudely. And so one way of looking at the uncertainty in the... The world is to try to suppose that we could that these things are there, but we only see them crudely. This idea we have to get rid of. It doesn't work. Because the whole discussion of this pair of boxes was this idea that there are red, green, and green, or green, red, red already, but we can't make it out very well. When we push buttons, it changes, it screws up. And that doesn't work. That's not enough. The world is still worse. We can't say, we can't really understand the quantum mechanics by saying. There are all these things. It's either one that's red, green, and green, or whatever combination. We just don't know what it is. And we look, we don't see too well. That doesn't quite work because of this business of correlating these boxes as demonstrated, or the einstein podolsky rosen paradox demonstrates. So the early ideas, if anybody first had them, that it was that there were these things like position and momentum, but you couldn't just quite make them out simultaneously, is not enough to understand the character of quantum mechanics. You can't say that there's both a position and a momentum simultaneously and be logically consistent in your predictions after that, after you've made that assumption and use normal logic with what we observe. So we have learned not to say things like a particle has to have a position, have some position, I don't know what it is, but some position and momentum at the same time. That statement starts out by making an assumption which sounds perfectly reasonable because I can measure the position, or I can measure the momentum, but I can't measure both at the same time. But to suggest, therefore, that even though I can measure one or the other, that they're both possible there is a, is a thing that we don't say now. And then we can use normal logic and get away with it without falling on our face too much, OK? Or at all, in fact. You're not allowed an and. You must have an either or. No, we're not even allowed an either. Oh, in a certain sense, it depends. Yes, we can't. Uh, it isn't quite an either or because there are other combinations. It's a little more subtle. And I'll try to explain the subtlety uh, in the next lectures. But I believe that we are really all here with uh, together in appreciating. And I think it's marvelous that we can understand this, uh, that we appreciate this uh, reasonably. Uh, it's quite good. Thank you. OK, if you're obeying, if you're obeying this rule, you, yes. if you uh, state it, which says that you, you are now allowed to make certain statements and believe them anyway. Right. Okay. Uh, what is, you, you made a statement which <laughs> earlier, which, which sounded to me like you were making exactly that kind of statement. You said... Uh, no doubt, because I often slip. That, that, uh, That's particles the particles uh, don't have to be identical, but they have to have three states. Okay, what does it mean to say that particle particles have three states? What I meant was that these, these boxes don't have to be identical. But each box has to have three buttons, three things that I can measure so I can talk about the correlations in order to be boxes that I'm interested in for this discussion here. That's all I meant. Nothing very deep at all. In other words, when all I said is that. Has three states, no, I never went to say. States are I didn't mean. 
No, I didn't mean to say anything about particles having three states, and I doubt if I ever said that, because in fact, this is not the way we describe that, so I probably didn't say that. I wrote it down as soon as you said it. All right, then in that case, I was trying to get an example of a situation that we're not supposed to say. That the particles either in this, this, or this condition, or whatever. And I didn't mean that. What I meant when you asked me about identical particles or identical boxes was merely this: that all I really needed for this discussion was not that this box be exactly the same as this box. It could be a triangular box or something else. And the particles that went in them might have been different, but they're correlated. And in each one, you can measure one of three things with these boxes, and they give these results that are correlated together perfectly with three different button pushings. Well, okay. That's I what mean, I meant. Well, That's correct, not, anyway, it's whatever. It's I'm, I'm quibbling with. It's, it's uh, the having is what I'm quibbling with. Can we say a particle has a state? We can say particles have states, yes, and we do say that. But in a new way, a way which I'll explain later on. In this particular example, believe it or not, this is done with a particle which has two states. So it's therefore not the kind of thing I would say, okay, that it had three states. If I did say it, I made a mistake. No, no, no. Yeah, I, I mean, I made an error, and you're right in asking. I didn't mean to say that. So it's a mistake. And the threeness here is, in fact, an attribute of the experimental setup. Yes, the threeness here was simply a particular choice. With a particle with two states, there are many different buttons that you could measure, many different things you could measure. The situation could be more, more complicated. And the probabilities, however, always have this horrifying aspect that they're impossible to explain by supposing this kind of a picture. And I've just taken three to make it easy for you so you don't have to deal with complicated numbers. Actually, there are other things I could have measured about this object, which would have interfered with the measurements here. This is if I had 17 buttons, and then give you a long talk about 17 buttons here, 17 buttons there. Right? The same particles, as a matter of fact, were given. I even gave it exactly the same pair. But the particular machinery for making measurements is more elaborate. There are 17 things you can try. Then it would be a story that would go something like this. If you measure any one of the 17 possibilities, okay, the left center by left by left center possibility, <laughs> and you make the same left by left center measurement over here, they always agree. If, on the other hand, you measure, let's say, number 11 here, and then check 12 over there, they would agree with a probability 0.79 or whatever, okay? And, uh, that's, you know, and uh, with number 10, there would be another number and so forth. And that measuring 12 changes the chances of, for number 11 to such and such, uh, with the big complicated numbers and all kinds of stuff. But it's much easier to take the three cases with the one number, three quarters, which we always come back to, uh, to explain the character, the character of the phenomenon occurs again and again that these numbers that I would have to give you for the 17 case would have this property that are inexplicable by supposing you have cards with 17 different, with, with red and green faces, then there are 17 cards in there and so on, okay? But the number three, therefore, is exactly what you said. Simply a choice made for exposition or pedagogical purposes to make the simplest possible example. But isn't this true of all, of all statements about, about states that it's always really a statement about the, the preparation setup. Uh, I don't know what you're saying. About the particle itself. I don't know what you're saying. But All I've ever said is what happened when you push buttons, or what I should have said. But since we're trying to discuss theoretical explanations of what happens when I push buttons, I may have some of the time said, let us suppose that it's in one of three conditions or whatever. But that was a way of thinking, that, yes? The possible of the ambiguity in here was we ought to have states, meaning we've got to have three things to measure, or three... Oh, yes, we do have to have at least three things to measure in order to see a paradoxical situation. Yeah. No, I, yeah, I think that's how you use the word states in that case. Oh, is that right? Oh. Yes. I don't know. Yes. Well, whatever. I'm sorry if I confused this thing. Yes. I'm not worried about that. Okay. Well, maybe you're worried about something you already knew before you came here. If that's the case, we're not allowed to discuss it. No, I think there's something... I think there's something that you'll probably clarify yes. in what you're going to say later on. Go on. So let me, yes? Well, let me get a chance at it, and then if you're still unhappy, we'll be very happy to try to explain, okay? So what's the big deal now about Bell's theorem? 
What do you mean big deal? That we've told you the it deal. Is a big deal. He showed it. He showed it. We showed you. Don't you think this is a big deal? These funny numbers. I do think it's a. Big okay, that's all the deal is. Okay, that's the big deal. That's the big deal. The Bell's theorem is in a contribution to that deal, which yes. is to point out mathematically that it has to happen. People knew it had to happen before. All he did was demonstrate it. It is not a theorem that anybody considers of any particular importance in quantum mechanics. We who use quantum mechanics have been using it all the time. Pay not much attention to it. It's not an important theorem. It's simply a statement of something that we know is true, a sort of a mathematical proof of it. It's, once you've seen this example, you know it's true, that you can get situations that you can't explain. All of this is a demonstration mathematically from the original equations that this can happen, which you know it can happen from this particular example. So it is not really a theorem that stands in a big deal in the middle of the of the subject and represents a big contribution that before we had Bell's theorem, there were things that we couldn't figure out, and after we had Bell's theorem, it was a new light. Not at all. It's just a mathematical statement of something, a more precise statement of something we all knew. Okay? People are trying to test this. Are, are, are there tests going on, as I understand? Well, they're always trying to test whether some of these predictions of the quantum mechanics that seem paradoxical from the point of view of classical thought or these making this assumption that a thing has to be this way or that way before you look at it that such an as if they want to s not break down that and think that maybe some of the things that are predicted by quantum mechanics are false and so every time we take an example and discuss it and they don't like that example they think it can't happen it's too crazy then they try to, ch they insist that somebody, ask somebody to check it or they try to check it. But none of these things have ever failed to work as expected. I really do believe that the quantum mechanics is fundamentally correct and that all this is simply a psychological trouble that we, we have. Uh, it is extremely difficult to get used to it because it's so much common sense and common knowledge that predict, that gets this idea that when you're not looking at something, it's either this way or that way. And to be able to say that, my God, you can't even say it's either or this way or that way when you don't look at it, but hey, it must be either this way or that. No, <laughs> if you say that, you're going to get in trouble. They say that can't be so bad. There must be that nature isn't quite like that. And every hope that they have is one by one so far demolished, OK? Well, Whether they can find a way of doing it some other way, I don't know. But uh, that's the way it is at the present moment. I understand that some people think of it best to they believe that the universe is somehow connected. You know, they, they try to use this idea that there's this uh, connection between these boxes, which is equivalent to Bell theorem, to say that indeed there is an uh, instantaneous connection between things and the universe. Yeah. Yes, well, I would like to do it that yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I must uh, say to you that because this is unfamiliar, that the do, do appear all the time when you're thinking about things, difficulties uh, you don't, that you're not satisfied with. And I'll try to explain some of those further on when we talk. The difficulties if we try to apply this idea somehow to the whole universe or something like that. And you say, well, we're in the universe and we're pushing the button. Isn't something done externally? And uh, how is it done inside when if you can't talk about the condition that things are in, how can you talk about the condition that the universe is in? After all, we're in it. And things like that produce a certain amount of trouble, which haven't been thought through very well, and leave us with a very uncomfortable feeling that the story isn't finished. Could it be that by...